Hey, what's up everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Lakers play the Phoenix Suns tonight in Phoenix at Footprint Center. I think they call it Footprint something. Footprint Center, I believe. Uh, and LeBron is questionable. That's the issue. Uh, he's coming off a 50-point game where he looks fantastic out there helping the young fellas, uh, not only by scoring the ball, but also looking for them intently uh, in key moments to help um, really get the victory. Uh, in a situation where we weren't expecting to win, you know, as, as we normally do when we have situations nowadays, we think we're a worse team most of the time. But when we play like we did, uh, where we put an emphasis on the young fellas and LeBron James scored the way that he did, uh, you're going to have opportunities to win games. And that's what we did. It was one of the better wins of the season and one of my favorite LeBron James performances. Um, so looking forward into this one, unfortunately, because we don't know if he'll play or not, we really have a kind of a question mark as to how best – uh, to view the tonight's game. Obviously, we're going up against the Phoenix Suns, the real Phoenix Suns, like the team that knocked us off in the playoffs last year um, and a team that is favored to win the West. So, uh, up there with Golden State and Memphis as the best teams of this uh, conference. So at this point, um, you understand that they're missing some players themselves. Uh, Cam Johnson is not going to be available for them tonight, and Chris Paul is out with an injury that's going to keep him out for a little bit. So... Um, what you're looking at is the depth of their team and finding out exactly what their guards can do. Uh, campaign has been going completely off, as expected, as he usually does, uh, when given an opportunity with Chris Paul out. Um, so pretty much pencil him in for a double-double tonight with assists uh, and points because that's just the kind of player he, he is when given big minutes. Um, he can really go. So <clears throat> he has been, and, and tonight against our defense, um, I would expect that he'll do just that. Now, the issue we're really going to have with the Phoenix Suns, besides them being an infinitely better team than us, uh, specifically with matchups is size. Uh, they got all the size, and they're going to be throwing it at us in, in droves tonight. Um, not only do you have to deal with DeAndre Ayton, all-star center, um, who's up for a contract, and I don't know. That situation is going to get very interesting in the offseason because, if I'm not mistaken, they didn't have his money ready. Uh, but he has had a fantastic season as expected um, and they're at the top of the Western Conference. So somebody, something's going to have to give, and I don't know that they have his money. So uh, this is one of those games, you know, when you start thinking about those type of situations. This is one of the games where you look at a guy like DeAndre Ayton and you see, um, you know, a, a March matchup with the Lakers is an opportunity for him uh, to once again remind people that he deserves money. Uh, and given that we're going to have a small ball lineup out there just by default, um, I'd expect this is one of those those games for him. He's he's going to probably be able to eat a lot. Um, and then you're looking at another center out there by the name of Bismack Biombo, who they picked up uh, in free agency, I believe, or did they trade for him? I'm not certain. But uh, has just had a complete and utter resurgence uh, with the Phoenix Suns. Sometimes players just go to certain places, and what they do is exactly what the team needs, and it just clicks, and that's exactly what's happened this year with Bismack Biombo. <clears throat> I would expect... Um, him uh, coming off the bench will also continue to eat just as good as Aiton will against us, small ball, as usual. So, And then you're looking at another one of our guys um, that, that we continue to see flourish in other situations, uh, JaVale McGee at the center position for the Phoenix Suns, who will also be thrown in there to throw damage at us from that position. So you can very easily see uh, the Lakers losing the battle on the boards even with a lot of effort tonight, it's going to be tough to win that battle. Even if we play Dwight, it's going to be very tough to win that battle. And uh, you just don't really see a whole lot of hope for the Lakers in regards to that particular aspect of this matchup. Just don't have the, the personnel uh, to really do anything about that three-headed monster at center. Now, um, then you got to deal with Mikael Bridges at the forward spot. Obviously, with Cam Johnson out. Uh, they're going to be digging a little deeper into their bench. So you start, you get to see some of the other players that they have. But Mikel Bridges is one of the best small forwards in basketball right now, one of the most effective defensive players in basketball, and one of the most effective three-point shooters in basketball right now. So he's highly underrated. I think it's one of those situations where he'll find his niche as like a Tayshaun Prince, Draymond Green kind of guy who, as long as he's on this team, He'll be looked at as a role player, but if he goes to the right spot, he can he can be the best player on the team. That's exactly who he is. And uh, at any given moment, he's going to flex uh, in terms of his stats. He hasn't done it yet, 
because it hasn't been necessary. It hasn't necessarily been something that is worked into the flow of what it is that Phoenix does since they have so many weapons. But because they're missing their weapons, and by the way, Devin Booker's out too. I don't think I mentioned that. He has health and safety protocol. He's out. So I, I just forgot to say that, but that's a big thing. Because those guys are out, you can totally see where his scoring may be more necessary in a game like tonight. And it's the Lakers. So let this be the night where he decides to go off for 40 or something like that. Because I know Mikael Bridges can do that, and I don't believe he ever has. So, you know, you just look at Mikael Bridges, um, you know, you look at their team, you look at those bigs, you look at campaign. And you guys have been listening to me uh, lately. I've been talking a lot about um, how players will start their careers stealing the ball. They'll show signs of being able to get that attribute right from the moment they step in, into the NBA. I've mentioned that thing um, in about two or three videos over the last week or so, two weeks ago, uh, two, weeks, two weeks or so. And campaign is yet another example of that type of player. Immediately when he came into the league with the Chicago Bulls, before he was able to do much of anything, he was able to steal the basketball. And that is always a sign in my mind that a player is capable of branching out and doing other things for some reason that just reigns true. And he's yet another example. So look for him to not only make uh, a difference offensively, which he always does, but he's always capable of doing things defensively as well because that's where he started making his mark in the, in the NBA. So Phoenix is, good as, it is as good as advertised. They are very deep. And be, because they're missing players tonight, you just hope they take their foot off the gas. <laughs> Especially if LeBron James is not playing. This is one of those situations where you feel like if you're the Lakers, you're the underdog, you're coming off a game where you found new identity in these youngsters, and you know for a fact that they are going to be wide awake for a matchup against Phoenix. Now, the tough part about this game for the Lakers is obviously it's on the road. And you also have a back-to-back -to -back tomorrow with Toronto, which lends itself to the idea that you probably won't play LeBron. So you definitely don't see yourself being the better team tonight, but you do see an opportunity for uh, a trap game if you're the Lakers. If Phoenix comes in with the notion that we're undermanned and a bad basketball team and they don't bring it, given the fact that they are undermanned themselves, uh, we can sneak in here and, 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 and get a victory. Now, I know that sounds like a stretch, and I'm not predicting that by any stretch of the imagination, but the fact of the matter is the emphasis that we placed on THT, Austin Reeves, Stanley Johnson, Winyan Gabriel, and Malik Monk in that previous game is a recipe for success. And those five players, if you throw in some Carmelo Anthony and obviously a lot of LeBron James if he's available, but if you got those players on the floor in any good combination, you got something. And then you throw in some of that uh, DJ Augustine who's just uh, arrived and is now somebody we, we want in our rotation as well. When you start considering the players that the Lakers now can use regularly, you give yourself a chance at a scrappy opportunity. I'm not saying you're going to win. I'm not saying it's the best lineup in the world or you're going to, you know, everything's going to be great. But I think those players give us the best opportunity to win. Um, obviously, Dwight Howard gives us what we need in the inside to seal the deal. Um, but I just worked into the equation that we're just not going to play him. That's where I don't really mention him as much anymore <laughs> because it's, it's gotten to this point in the season to where, um, you know, I, I, I love the fact that we have him here because he's our last and only center, but I would much rather the Lakers relieve him of this situation so that he can go play for a contender. You know, there are some other teams in this league who need a center right now, and given the fact that we're not a winning team, given the fact that we're not utilizing him even when we have an opportunity to do so and need to, I just think it would be of service to Dwight to allow him to seek a championship opportunity or a real playing time. Um, I understand that he has some serious personal stuff going on in his life right now and, and thoughts are going out to him. We're going to talk about what's going on there. But what we will say is as long as he's got something left in the tank, he shouldn't be sitting on the bench like this. And I think the fact that we've seen him not play his best has not been because he's lost so much, but because he's been out of rhythm every time he's, you know, in this situation. He's not been able to get consistent minutes. He doesn't know when he's going to be playing. And he's a guy that stays ready. 
So this is one of the first times in his career where he's not getting consistent minutes. He's coming from a situation where he was, even though he was playing behind Joel Embiid. Joel missed a great deal of time last year in Philadelphia, and Dwight was able to show once again that he could still do some things. So um, I'm just really disappointed in how the Lakers have handled Dwight, and I would much rather us, um, you know, if he chooses, same thing with Carmelo Anthony, if he chooses, uh, to, to move on and go to a better situation to help get themselves into a playoff situation this season. I don't think too many seasons are left in these guys' careers to be toying around on bad teams just out of sentiment, um, you know, for Laker Nation or, or Genie or Braun or whatever reason would keep a guy wanting to stay here. If they just want to be here, cool, great. If they love L.A., want to play basketball for the Lakers, we love them too. Thanks for being here. But uh, for veterans like that, I, I want to see the, them in a winning situation this season. They're healthy, they're capable, and, you know, teams teams need them, you know. If we were a championship team right now, I would want those guys on this team, no question. Uh, but since I believe we're not, and our emphasis should be on young players, um, I, I do believe the Lakers should waive those guys. I do. It, it's just simply because they deserve to be in better situations. So that's why I'm not mentioning Dwight. Um and that's, that's that. You know, I would think the same thing for LeBron if he didn't have such a big role on this team. If he wasn't such a massive part of what we do and have him on contract, I would think the same thing about LeBron. Like, look, all of our vets need to be winning right now. You know, they need to be in Milwaukee, Phoenix, Golden State, Memphis. This is where all these guys should be. They shouldn't, they should, they shouldn't be in the mud with us, man. They just shouldn't. So, <clears throat> anyway, that's my little spiel in regards to that. Back to the topic at hand. The players that I mentioned give us the best opportunity to make this a scrappy, dirty, nasty matchup for the Phoenix Suns. Stanley Johnson versus, um, you know, if, if we match up properly, I would love to see how Stanley Johnson uh, matches up with Mikael Bridges. Now, obviously, that's a tough matchup. Mikael Bridges is a better player, but I think Stanley Johnson's the type of guy who he's active on the defensive end as well. He has active hands. He does some of the things that, that, uh, that make us happy about him as well in that small forward position. So if he can offset some of what Mikael Bridges does, that could be really good for us. I know our guy Austin Reeves is going to be uh, defensive-minded tonight, um, you know, given the fact that this is a, a fantastic team with guards all over the place, young guards like him. I think he's going to be active. And, of course, Malik Monk continues to, to show why he deserves a nice contract at the end of this season. Um, and why he deserves to start in this league. You know, I, I look at him and I continue to see a guy who's just ascending, uh, not only as it pertains to his game, but also his uh, his conditioning, you know, his his mechanics and, and his footwork and his IQ. He's locked in and he's playing great basketball. And given the fact that this is his first real opportunity at consistent playing time, the jump that he's made of uh, from from last year and in his previous years with the Hornets to what he's looked like with us makes you think his upside could be great from here. You know, um, that's where my mind goes. It's like, okay, how much how much better can he get? You know, because he's already jumped a lot. So I like Malik Monk, and I think he's going to have a fantastic opportunity to score the ball tonight. So that's what I got to say, man. Phoenix Suns. Um, you know, this this is a situation where at this far into this season, you just expect us to be a mighty mouse small ball team you know what i mean we've we've argued and fought about not only wanting a center on this team but um also playing the center that we have and now we're with, with 17 games left in the season i just think at this point we're like all right we no more thinking about the center position it's obvious that's just a lost cause let's just try to be the mighty mouse avengers and 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 and, and try to kick people in the kneecaps i mean that's really what we're trying to do so let's do it. <laughs> you know, that's that's where we have to be as Laker fans, because otherwise we're just going to be frustrated with the product. So uh, this is what it is. And, and, and our guys are embracing it. You know what I mean? Uh, the players are. So let's see what happens. I didn't mention Russell Westbrook at all. And I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. It's that real. It's gotten to a point where he didn't come to mind. And that's. I, I guess that's a good thing because most of the time when we talk about Westbrook, we're usually considering how he's, he's, he's turned the ball over, this, that, and the third. He had a 30-point game in the game prior to, but in the game where Bron had 50, this previous one we won, uh, he was an afterthought, you know. He, he was off balance. He was making mistakes. 
here and there. He may, may have made a few layups here and there, but um, he didn't really stick out for me. You know, I don't remember him really even doing a whole lot other than uh, kind of being off balance and sitting down. So it's getting to a point where I don't work him into the equation. And it's up to him to change that by continuing to not turn the ball over, playing smart, and doing things that ultimately help the team, for which he's had a hard time doing. There was a play in the previous game that comes to mind, which is why I'm just kind of dozing off in my thought, that he made a good decision. He passed up a three-point shot and drove the ball um, and got to the got got the layup I think he got to the line I'm not sure if they called it or not but those are the type of things that I think help his efficiency um you know because because shooting bad three-point shot shooting bad rhythm off rhythm mid-range jumpers he seems to be just you know the great antithesis to the team's rhythm so what he's going to have to do is just continue to attack at his pace without trying to slow down and figure out what other people are doing I know the idea is for him to do that but it seems like when he does that He's on some ugly duckling frequency that everybody else just isn't on. And so that's what stood out to me in the previous game is just how off frequency he was to the rest of the team when he was on the floor. But how within that, he, that particular play stood out and he made a good decision and was able to connect. So uh, until he's able to kind of lock in with the rest of the team, figure out their rhythm, figure out his own rhythm, um, I kind of just want us to sit on. I'm just going to be honest with you. I look at, like I said, the best opportunities for us to win comes from those players that I mentioned. Um, and I just don't feel like he's one of them. Uh, I, I do like what he can do when he's right. But until he's right, I, I look at him as practically unplayable, to be completely honest with you. So it doesn't make me feel good to say that. Um, but that's just what I see. So... Yeah, man, that's what I got, man. Tonight, Phoenix Suns, tomorrow, the Toronto Raptors. I want to tell everybody tomorrow I may not be able to do one of these pregame videos uh, because I got the carpet uh, that's going to be uh, replaced in my apartment tomorrow. So uh, I'm up early. We're doing a lot, and I'll probably be outside of the apartment for which I won't be turning on this camera. So um, I don't expect I'll do that video, but if I do, look for it. Uh, but I will be paying attention to the Lakers if I can. Tonight for sure, tomorrow we'll see. Uh, but that's what we got, man. Today's Phoenix tomorrow toronto maybe braun maybe not likely not given that it's a back-to-back -back. so keep your eyes open for that and uh yeah that's what i got man bdl 44 thank y'all for watching peace